We're Chelsea and Tony, and you're watching our Picture This podcast. It's a little bit different this week because uh, we're in Vegas. We're seeing a lot of new products, so we wanted to put out a podcast about the products we're seeing and what we think the future of photography is. Yeah, cameras have gotten pretty amazing, so we wonder, like, what else can they even do? Tell us who sponsors this. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. You can get your free trial today by going to squarespace.com slash Tony. And use, if you decide you want to buy it, you can use the coupon code PORTFOLIO and get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. First up, okay, more resolution, more focusing points, higher frame rates, It's lower getting noise. crazy. Yeah. Like, the meg like, how many megapixels can we have before we don't even have the computing power to make it practical anymore? Yeah, computers aren't getting any faster. I think we also run into some limitations of physics. Like, atmospheric conditions are going to limit your resolution to some amount, and also there becomes an upper, like, what are you going to do with it? All those megapixels, like, how are you going to present that image in a way where anybody could ever appreciate it? Yeah, and right now, you know, mirrorless is really huge, and everyone's coming out with mirrorless cameras. They're great. The A9 has a focusing rate of, like, 99% or something like that. What, what do you aim for next? Just 1% different? 100%? You know, you have the auto eye detect feature and that works really well too. So it's like you don't even have to really try to get your focus on the eye anymore for portraits. It's becoming so good. It's so good. Well, the number one thing I hope they change is the user interface. I think the user interfaces on these are appalling, like can, all cameras. But can I just say that when I put myself in the shoes of the camera manufacturer, if you can't market something, what's the point of putting a bunch of money into it? And I think that's why a lot of the sexiest sounding features get put out there because it's like you can't you can't put in your marketing now with just kind of a better menu system. Like nobody buys a camera for the menu system, even though that ends up being really important. And I think that's why a lot of the menu systems make me crazy. Yeah, I think it would have to be a long-term investment. Right now, I see a lot of people who buy a camera and then they use it a couple times and then they never pick it up again. I talk to people who are like, oh yeah, I have a camera, but you know, I didn't really ever figure it out. And so I just go back to using my smartphone. But they're never going to buy another camera. That will always be their last camera. You're if we right. can make the first camera they pick up usable and fun and much more like a smartphone, then... They're going to enrage like the photo purist. But we're talking about the amateur coming in. You don't want to scare them away from photography right away because... The camera seems complicated. Please, I can't figure out the user interfaces. The <laughs> menu systems have so many different pages, and yeah. I'm often like, oh, I need to feature? change this one thing, and I go through page after page after page, and don't tell me that you've memorized every menu item. I've I made did. so many tutorials, and I can still not remember it. And I'm around all the pros, and every day they're, they need to remember something, and they're asking other people, like, oh, which page is this? I can't find this setting. User interfaces are terrible, and also they're not touch-based. That's a great idea. A search function. Give us a little Six. virtual keyboard so you can search for bracketing or whatever. What would be your dream feature to see in a camera? I want direct cloud connectivity. Yes. It's not hard. My watch piggybacks on my Verizon wireless mm -hmm. account. So if I don't have my phone, it can send back and forth. I think it costs me five bucks a month. Why can't they put that little cellular chip into my camera and just have it send up, you know, could be smaller JPEG files or whatever, but give me different options. Give me the ability to upload it directly into Creative Cloud. And you then when I, I open up Lightroom, there they are already. Or I open up my phone and there are my pictures. So no like memory cards or I need to copy this and open the Wi-Fi app. Just have it in the cloud. Yeah, I find myself I'll have like $8,000 worth of camera gear just in my hands and I'll quickly hold up my phone and take a picture so I can put it on Snapchat or Instagram or whatever. I don't really want to. I would really rather use my camera, but I just like the ease of being able to put the picture on social media right away. How great would it be to take the picture with your camera and then boom, there it is. I mean, I know you guys are going to be like, oh, there's apps for that, but I've tried them and I, it's hard. Yeah, Canon, Sony, and Nikon are all kind of working on that, but none of it really works very well right now. I think they have to work with the phone manufacturers like Google and Apple and get a higher speed connection from the camera to the phone, something that works reliably. 
and quickly, and that is not Bluetooth. Bluetooth is not reliable. It's the flakiest piece of garbage for everything that I Bluetooth. It's always flaking out. So, okay. We have like the resolution wars. We have the megapixel wars. We have the autofocus wars. Cameras are really good right now. Like better than they've ever been. They're all just pretty great, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think a manufacturer will have to introduce into the game to make things exciting again? Here's how I think they get pros. They streamline the workflow. Yeah, because saving me, time is money. Yeah, and for me, it's a lot of shooting and then chimping. If, if it's a portrait session, I need to make sure that I got the shot, which means I shoot, I zoom into the eye. Is you it make crisp? sure it's crisp. Wouldn't it be great if it could just detect which ones had a sharp eye? And when you go through your photos, it just tells. Sometimes I can't see the LCD screen. It's tiny. I think, oh, I nailed it. That looks great. I get it on my computer. And it just wasn't as sharp as I'd hoped it would be. Maybe I got the eyelash instead of, you know, the cornea. I want it to automatically chimp for me. Auto chimp. Auto chimp. You shoot and it gives you a little ping, ping, ping. Or it goes like, eh. No if, sound. If it, or, okay, it could Haptics. vibrate. Yeah, it could haptic. It could just zzz, a little bit. It can look at the picture after you took it. it. It knows where it tried to focus. If the eye isn't sharp, give me a little buzz. If it has image stabilization, but I move too much and there's some motion blur showing, give me a little buzz. And that way I know I need to reshoot or I know that I got it and I don't need to reshoot. So I think that the difficulty for, for the engineers and the manufacturers becomes making it an inter, like, uh, like a small step that feels natural to people because you had like the Minolta talker and they tried to do something to make photography easier. And I think it was actually a little too futuristic and unnatural and nobody wanted that. So I think haptics were kind of used to our phone buzzing. Mm -hmm. It's got to be something where you don't have to give it an extra thought. It's got to make your workflow easier. It can't be something that sounds good on paper, but makes your life more complicated. They need to step up and get some of the user interface developers from smartphone apps. Um, here's a little thing. Uh, the QI charging, you know how I have wireless charging on my phone, I can oh, just yeah. put it on a pad. How nice would it be? They can build that into desks. You just put your camera on your desk and it charges and then it's always charged. You never have to worry about finding your battery and putting it in the charger That'd and then getting so it back nice. out. You just set it down and it's ready to go. What about um, some of, I have a mug that charges because I'm very fancy, but there's just a little light so I can see if it's charged. Yeah. You can just glance at your camera and be like, oh, my battery's full instead of having to you can turn it on. That's super lazy. I think once you get there and you get with the wireless transferring of the uh, images and you, you can get rid of SD cards and then you can make the camera completely sealed up yeah. with no ports or anything and then it could be super waterproof because you wouldn't have to fuss with anything. Speaking of wireless, another thing to borrow from phones, I want wireless monitoring of sound and wireless microphones, but built in. Because oh, right now we have to put this, this big old rig in the hot shoe and run all these cables around mm -hmm. to get our wireless lab mics in. Build that into the camera. I know we'd have to add a little bulk to it, but it would save so much bulk and complexity and extra sets of batteries. This is like, I feel bad for the engineers because we're saying you did everything so well, now you have to just think of something new. <laughs> uh, we we're just trying to keep them employed. We're keeping, we're keeping everybody very busy with our crazy ideas here. But I'm excited. I guess what I'm saying is things are going so well. Um, cameras are just getting better and better and easier to use. And it's like, I want to see things get more intuitive. I want to see things more like a smartphone in the way where it's easy to share your pictures, easy to curate, saving me time in my workflow. Speaking of sharing your pictures, like what would you do if you needed to make your pictures look awesome on the internet? Squarespace website. <laughs> I'm really tired. I got double jet lag. I would put them on Squarespace. Well, what a great I idea. Just, <laughs> How did actually, you come up with that? I, I already have my pictures on Squarespace and it's great. And you can get a free trial. You don't even have to buy it. Just go to squarespace.com slash Tony, sign up. No credit card needed. It's not like that type of thing where you have to cancel it later. Like it's literally just free. Try it if you like it. I think you're gonna like it. If you don't like it, whatever. It'll be gone in 14 days. And then if you wanna buy it, you can get 10% off with the coupon code Tony. But no, portfolio. portfolio. It's so easy. I literally just completely redid mine with a whole new modern design yeah. and it took me all of like 10 minutes. I just chose a different template, dragged my pictures in, made a couple little minor changes. It was good to go. Mine needs a free fra uh, refresh because they have like this new scrolling. That's what I did. Template. Oh, really? Yeah, don't steal my design. 
I'm gonna do it. <laughs> they have lots of different designs. And you you can, don't have to rip you, me off. You can drag and drop them. I thought of it first, even though you implemented it first. I actually, I had been thinking about it since like right after my birth. So you're you're practically copying me. Bird. Okay, thank you, Squarespace. I have some ideas that would enrage people for a beginner camera. Oh, great. <laughs> you know, I know people that want to take better vacation pictures. They want better pictures. They don't necessarily want to put a ton of time into photography. You know, I'm thinking of like the point and shoot type of people. What about auto composition or um, some kind of bar through the viewfinder that tells you if your picture is going to be good? Like it could look at the composition. It could look at the contrast. It can detect the colors. You could say like, this is pretty good. It could see if it's a flat looking scene or um, it could like, depth map and see if you have enough depth of field to be interesting. Yeah, like if the, the subject is dark and the background is dark, it might detect that and brighten up the subject to provide some subject mm -hmm. separation. Yeah. Maybe people's feet always get cut off in the bottom of the frame in an awkward way. It could highlight that in red and be like, hey, you're going off the frame hey. here, just watch the edges of it. It could literally talk to you and be like, hey, bro, watch the edges of the frame. Oh, yeah, bro cam 3000. <laughs> It's a Northrop creation. This is super nerdy, but we totally need to replace JPEG. JPEG is such an old format. Now you could do uh, HEIC and it's like twice as efficient with better quality. We just have to get everybody to agree to use this new format. How do we do that? Just a vote? I, one camera manufacturer would have to do it and get just get Adobe to adopt it and then we'd be done. Mm. Okay. Think on that. <laughs> Sounds easy, right? It's easy. I can do that. I've got time tomorrow. We do lots of wildlife photography. And with portraits, eye detection has changed everything. There's no more, you know, if you switch from vertical to horizontal or change your composition, eye detection will just always focus on the eye. I eye want detection for, for an animal would be insane. That would be yeah. so good. It would make it so much easier. Because sometimes it looks like you got the eye in focus and you, it's just like feathers on the head or you focus the, on the nose wing tip, or right? the whiskers or the wingtip. Oh, that would be a real game changer. Every wildlife photographer would have to switch over. It would help so much. There would be a purist that would just hate the idea, but we will leave him with his blurry pictures. <laughs> I like that one a lot. I'm signing up. Can we? Can you make this camera for me? This is how I do it. I tell the manufacturers. And <laughs> you do all the hard work. It. We sit here on a bed and we complain, and you guys do all the hard work. Okay, now that we've got our camera connected, there could be a couple of simple things. First okay. of all, firmware updates, no more like copying them to the SD card. Just like everything else in like my car and my phone, just talk to the internet and see you have a new firmware update and install it okay. automatically. I like that. I also want to log in to my phone somehow, my camera, and have it download all my settings. So if I pick up a different camera, all my little button shortcuts and all my preferences are automatically oh. transferred over. I like that because when I pick up another camera, I often forget that things are different. I think that would encourage people to upgrade when a new camera model is out too. If you did, if it was just, it felt like your old camera, if it could take on that personality oh, automatically. That is why I hesitate to pick up a new camera often because I just have that muscle memory. And if someone could say, hey, it's gonna be pretty much the same, you can just plug in all the same settings. And pros often have multiple bodies anyway. Yeah. And you might decide you're gonna use back button focus. It'd be nice if all your cameras automatically adopted that. Wow. I think there's a lot of potential for um, computational photography. Things like you could build an image averaging and mm -hmm. use an electronic shutter and just stack multiple pictures together. And that could uh, effectively allow you to have, say, an ISO 10 or an ISO 5, so no more ND filters. You could just do a 10 second exposure in broad Filters daylight. Thing again? <laughs> uh, I like that idea. I, I wanna see some form of apps or scripting so that people could write a little simple program and for example, do some kind of custom time lapse or just let us tell the camera what to do on its own. I like that. They have that for drones. You can program drones to fly around and take any kinds of pictures, but no camera manufacturer has picked up that ability. Let us hackers do some hacking. Magic Lantern and Canon a revolutionized video because people just figured out how to ca hack Canons, but Canon never supported that. Just give me a safe, supportable interface. Smartphones run all sorts of apps. Cameras can definitely do that. We just need the developers to open it up. What kind of apps would you want to see with that? Auto sandwich. Auto sandwich, of course. No, really, what kind of apps would you want to say? I would like more complex uh, time lapses. Things yes. like star trails, lots of cool special effects. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be so cool if there was a star trails app and it overlaid the stars like your smartphone app can do? 
Oh, so yeah. So you could just find the North Star and look at it on the app on your camera. Oh, that would be so smart. That would be awesome. And why not? You could definitely do that, but they just don't. Why, why don't? <laughs> yeah, you could point a little arrow on the screen to find yeah, the North Star. That's cool. I wish when you were taking a long exposure and you're using like image stabilization handheld, yeah. I wish it would uh, point you in a little arrow because so that you can keep the camera centered on the subject yeah. so that you're less likely to ruin your long exposure because mm -hmm. your hands wander around and once you wander too far then the shots ruined the image stabilization can't compensate anymore in the future in we're going to have some sort of smart glasses we're all going to be wearing these smart glasses that will project some screen okay and then eventually it'll probably just be right in our I eye like black mirror eye. style mm -hmm. yeah because that's cooler but for there will be a while when we wear nerdy glasses with like a heads up display okay how cool will it be if that can wirelessly be your viewfinder so that you could have the camera at the waist or over your head and you're seeing it. And then if you want to review your pictures, it could pop up and you could see it and it could just completely fill your vision. I feel like that would be cool until one million creeps ruined it. <laughs> but yeah, I like the idea. Yeah, they're just leaving the camera in the bathroom and watching everything live yeah. from the next room. Yeah. It, this future is inevitable and it sucks. I'm I just sorry. went, I went Black Mirror. See, I went to the dark side right away. Mm -hmm. You have to consider it. That's all I got. That's all you got. You had great ideas. I hope somebody will listen. We'll see some of these in the future. Maybe, yeah. We've predicted things before. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have great ideas for the future, maybe crepe glasses like Tony thought of, <laughs> just put it in the comments down below. We want to know about your future. Thank you, Squarespace, for making this podcast possible. Be sure to check out the picture of this podcast. It's okay if you watch on YouTube, but the podcast is really nice when you're driving or editing Working photos. Out, doing dishes, cooking, feeding the kids. Yeah, if you want your own Squarespace portfolio, go to squarespace.com Tony, and you can use the coupon code portfolio to get 10% off. Thanks.